This is Channel 4. Pender's Fen by David Rudkin continues this season of outstanding television films from the 70s. Film for today. This is Three Choir Country, landscape of the great Anglican cathedrals of the Severn and the Wye. Though Severn and Wye were those rivers' native names long before Angle or Saxon or Christian or Roman soldier even came. Behind me there is Breeden Hill, houseman country. And westward, nearer than they seem, the Malvern Hills of Langland, Pierce Plowman, of Edward Elgar, The Dream of Gerontius, Introduction and Allegro, quintessential visionary England. But Breeden isn't an English name either. That's ancient British or Celtic, Bray Dune, Hill of the Fort. As for Malvern there, well, that name has been pure Welsh or British for a good 2,000 years. Moilvrin, Bear Hill, layer upon layer on layer of inheritance. What's in a name? The devil of a lot. Or, in the light of this film, the demon of a lot. Oh, my country. I say over and over. I am one of your sons, it is true. I am. I am. Yet how shall I show my love? Father does have a sermon to prepare. Well, we like you to like good music, Stephen, but it was terribly loud. Don't be silly, Stephen. It's all right, Mother. You've ruined it now.
I think the greatest visionary work in English music is The Dream of Gerontius by Sir Edward Elgar. It poses the most important question. What is to happen to my soul? Gerontius, Greek Geron Gerontos, an old man, has died. The music portrays his experience after death. An angel meets his soul beyond the grave. I think this angel is male, yet he sings in a woman's voice which makes him unearthly. He takes the dead man's soul across the grills of hell, where demons scream and mock them. Soon they approach the courts of light. We hear a distant singing, tumultuous, like a mighty ocean. Elgar himself was a pious Roman Catholic, but his message is true for us Protestants too. Perhaps even, perhaps especially for those not blessed with the Christian faith. And though it is about the judgment on one dead man, it is surely about that other judgment that faces us daily, in every moment of our lives, over and over come to the crisis, Gerontius asks, shall he see God? The angel cries with joy, this soul is strong enough to look on God and stand the terror and the shock. And so they come before the throne of God. dissonance, the moment of the glance of God, surely the most shattering moment in all of music. To hear in your head such sounds, to be a man, have heaven and hell between your ears and write them down in notes and walk those hills, and hear the angel and the demon, the judgment on those hills, and hear the dissonance that is the piercing glance of God. Is this the day you school kids play at soldiers, then? Some of us are learning to defend our country. Well, you should get your anklet straight, then. England's last hope. I wish Joel had liked me. He can be so cutting. I was wondering when you'd notice. Milk lad, hardly original. So unaware. You'll grow through it. We most of us do. So totally unaware. And so late. What do they say here? A late spring never lies.
those letters. Sufosium, balance of mind. Trust Franklin. Franklin always knows. His father's a priest. Not a priest, a parson. Don't you know the difference, Honeybone? Time everywhere, help in the showers, the car and soap flakes. Honeybone, let there be light. A healthy mind in a healthy body. Even over the bog, look. Genofi seata. That means discover thyself. Long cover thy ass, more like. Honeybone, that's dirty. Cadet Franklin, your webbing's a disgrace. Corporal Honeybone, your buckles are disgusting. Corporal Honeybone, male and female must both be clean. Catch something else. Mr. Chairman, sir. Gentlemen. Our country, England, is the freest in the world. We have liberty of movement, liberty of choice. Free speech, a free press. We do not have political censorship. Our police are not armed. We do not have a secret police. We know what we are discussing here tonight. Not the media in general, but one program in particular. That one that is in everybody's mind just now. The so-called TV documentary, Who Was Jesus? Who Was Jesus? It calls itself, I quote, investigative theology. We know in our hearts it is atheistic and subversive trash. From this at least, the homes of England have been saved by a timely injunction, for which we have not the abstraction of freedom itself to thank, but those who exercise eternal vigilance on its behalf. Look at this man and woman. See if you do not see them as I see them. A mother and a father above all parents. A mother and a father of England, who in this modern wilderness of amorality stand up alone to uphold our erring national family on its Christian path. Perhaps we should let the 18th birthday pass and not tell him at all. Never tell him. It was agreed in the beginning. Not to tell him till he was 18 was agreed. A mistake. Yes. We should have done what we thought was right. Not what we agreed. Yes. With all respect to the lady who asked this, our postmistress, I hope she doesn't take this out on me by withholding my mail. <laughs> you talk about strikers holding the country to ransom. Well, what are they supposed to do? Play cricket? <laughs> Besides, hold us to ransom, isn't that what government itself does? And by government, I don't mean those figureheads who come pleading to us every five years to have their licenses renewed. I mean the manipulators, the fixers, the psychopaths who have real power in the land. Is it strikers who play monopoly for real with our countryside and cities? Is it strikers who smash the fabric of our communities for greed? Is it strikers who throw up in the air, million after million, your taxes and mine, on bungles, deliriums, and fantasies? Look, is it strikers who pillage our earth, ransack it, drain it, dry for quick gain to hand on nothing but dust to the children of tomorrow? Now, now, come off it, Mr. Arn. People were dying because of this strike. Pensioners. Old soldiers dying of starvation and cold. Yes. When that happens in a strike, it's cold they die of. When it's inflation, authorities high hand, or callousness that kills them, it's hypothermia they die of then. Now, you have to get this into perspective. Perspective, I give you. What? for instance, is the ultimate question a government are left with when pondering matters of defence. How many million civilians can we afford to let get slaughtered before the remainder revolt and depose us? Oh. 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 Mr. 
chairman, do we have to endure this hysterical barrage? Each must have his say, Sir Nicholas. Look. Not far from here is an expanse of country. You all know it well. Brummies drive out of a Sunday to leave their litter there. <laughs> Poets have hymned the spirit of this landscape. Our greatest composer has enshrined it. Farmland and pasture now, an ancient fen. The earth beneath your feet feels solid there. It is not. Somewhere there the land is hollow. Somewhere beneath is being constructed something we are not supposed to know. A top secret. We locals are not supposed to know it's even there. And you accept it? What is it then? An air aid shelter to shift the population of Birmingham to in all of four minutes. What is it hidden beneath this shell of lovely earth? Some hideous angel of technocratic death. An alternative city for government from beneath. Motorways there. Offices, control suites, silent, empty, waiting for the day. Telephones, computers, signal equipment. Ministry pencils, every grade of H and B, ready, sharpened against the minute. Oh, you say, it must be something to protect us. Us? When for all we know, the likelihood is our entire civilian population is marked down on some top secret memo somewhere as strategically expendable. When you talk of holding the country to ransom, please think of possibilities like that. The British working man will never let a dictatorship happen. <laughs> He's far too bloody-minded. I damn well hope so. Mr. Arne is a writer. For all I know, he might be another Shakespeare. <laughs> but his imagination runs away with him. That is a shocker. <laughs> He's a terrible crank, Father. He is He's a shocker. He's not a nice man from his television plays. Well, can't you, Mother? There's always somebody in them unnatural. I think he's unnatural himself. That's why he and his wife haven't been blessed with children. Stephen. It's probably a good thing. What? That they haven't any children. Bringing them up with values like they have. God gives to whom he chooses. He does not make mistakes. Stephen, you can be grotesque.
on fire. I had a dream like that, sir. Like the Queen in the play, sir. About a snake, frankly. No, sir. I had a dream, sir. Yes, officer, no doubt you had. Like a parable. That there was a demon on my dad's church tower, sir. Black and shiny. Like a jet statue looking down at me, sir. Then I thought, still dreaming, sir, I'll turn him to an angel. So I used my willpower in my dream, sir. Pushed all my will up at the demon on the church and turned him into a shining angel. Then I thought, in my dream, sir, if I can turn him one way, I can turn him back. So I pushed all my will and up on the tower, the angel turned to a demon again. A mannequin dream, Franklin. Yes, sir. Does that mean dirty, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Sir. It's a heresy, sir. A heretical belief in the early church that the universe was a battlefield between the forces of lightness and dark, sir. I only wish, Franklin, you would now and then transfer your mannequin impulse to the rugger field. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, Franklin doesn't do anything for the house, sir. But he's a passenger. He ought to be boiled in oil. <laughs> uh, skinned first, then boiled alive. I say, excuse me. You've spelt pinvin wrong. It's V, not F. Pinvin. The police had this road blocked off this morning. Why can't we get through? Well, it's just closed. Why? Soldiers can't get through. It's pinvin. Yes. Pull the other one, Rector. There's a peal of bells on. You know, I was thinking the other day, the lonely places our technocrats choose for their obscene experiments. Los Alamos, for instance. Ah, yes. Birthplace of the atomic bomb. The ancient Indians had venerated that for centuries as a sacred ground. Yeah, again and again. Everywhere you'll find these sick laboratories built on or beneath such haunted sites. As though thereby to bottle the primal genie of the earth and to pervert him. Now, oh, who's the genie in our then? I wouldn't know. Are you interested in the occult, Mr. Arne? Not in the least. I'm a writer. Demons are my own. It's not for nothing that always around churches, ghosts and demons give the greatest trouble. They do say. Ah, because the church gives off most powerfully the Manichaean challenge. Oh, some would say that the spire of a church acts as an aerial, attracting around it the old elemental forces of light and darkness in combat. Some would say. I am not sure which side the church has always been on. Hello, 
Hello, Stephen. Hello, Mrs. Arne. What's the leaf for? Comfrey. She has an abscess. A herb cure? Not a cure so much. The only way to let an abscess heal is to stop bitch face worrying at it. Can't the vet put a poultice on? She'll tear it off. They don't like foreign bodies, but she'll leave a leaf. She doesn't even know it's on. Why is manichaeanism a heresy, Dad? The world is a battleground between good and evil. Why is it an error to believe so? Manichaeans didn't believe exactly that. They believed that light was a vulnerable spark in man under constant attack from forces of darkness. They hoped for some great son of light himself to come to vanquish darkness and set light free. The Son of Light has come. His name is Jesus. Not to the Manichaeans. Jesus to them was only one of many sons of light. In an unending succession of them, in an unending battle to save man's spark of light. Father, do you think dreams come true? Don't come true. They are true. What do you mean? Your dream tells you a truth about yourself. A truth you hide from while you're awake. A truth you need to know about yourself. For your well-being. This buried truth comes up in your head while you're asleep. Rising to act itself out like a flame. That's the responsibility of the dream, Stephen. To acknowledge that truth about yourself the dream reveals, then act upon that truth. The believer would call such a dream a voice from God. You're a believer. We're believers. You believe in God. I believe in truth.
Missing Cadet Rifleman Askoff, sir. Absent from school, sir. Squad B, all present and correct, sir. Squad C, missing Corporal Franklin, sir. Not absent from school, sir. Sergeant Honeyburn. Sir. Find Franklin, will you? Sir. Put it out, Squire. Put it in a letter, Squire. End it all day. Some of us has to work. apprenticeship also. What are you, Franklin? A non-cooperative, sir. And whose noble company do you now join? The sixth form remnant, sir. What sort of person are you going to be? I do not say what sort of man. I begin to wonder, Franklin, whether you want to be a man at all. My opinions carry a deal of weight, whatever you may think of them. Opinions such as mine that you'll have to contend with all along the line. Your decision to be a non-cooperative is a decision you will have to make again and again and again. Even more so after you leave here, frankly. Every moment, every day, against the reality of the world. No doubt you think me a very peculiar sort of chap. Not at all, sir. I have always looked up to you as... as an English norm, sir. You're the only boy in my house I still cannot recommend for the Sixth Form Club. Doesn't that pain you?
If that's how you feel, Mr. Cook. Sir? You all right, Squire? You all right? You, you all right? I'm charging down that hill right into me. Hey! Hey! Sorry. Just help you up. That's all. That's all. No. I'm all right, Dove. I ain't killed him. I'm all right. He'll get over it.
and reconstruct whatever political doctrinal purpose the tamperers were bending the gospel to serve. Unearthed from this fabrication, the troubling historical and spiritual reality of Christ himself To the reader who shouts blasphemy, I say blasphemy worse, that the name of this life-enhancing revolutionary Jesus should now be dangled like a halo above a sick culture centered on authority and death. Place name book. Oh, I lent that. So your father, Stephen. I meant to bring it back. Oh, well, only if you finish with it. Oh, I got what I needed. I should have one of my own. Buying is one of those simple jobs that never get done. How's your new play coming on? Ah, it gets written. Will it be outrageous? Your plays often are. I make them tamer now. Ah, the public have lost the imaginative strength they had. Their sight and will to see what's really going on have been steadily weakened by the entertainment barons for gain, by the yes-men for cravenness. We're not people anymore with eyes to see. We're blind, gaping holes, the end of a production line, stuffing with trash. We're not even citizens, we're dogged serfs on some mad Great Wall of China project. Our taskmasters, no Hitler, Stalin, or Mao, but our own management class. Their pink, fat faces even begin to look alike. My husband's what people call a paranoid. Persecution mania. That's right. Probably his twisted notions usually prove true. There's one hope for man only. When the great concrete megacity chokes the globe from pole to pole, it shall already have bedded in some hidden crack the sacred seed of its own disintegration and collapse. Disobedience, chaos. Out of those alone can some new experiment in human living be born. Here am I subverting you. Your father will be horrified. Oh, I don't know. in 
which to invest is national pride. Well, I can only assume it's because you hanker suddenly to join what I term your generation's underside. You've never wholeheartedly subscribed, have you, Franklin, to the traditions of the school? Consider the photographs. It's fashionable now to mock such men as these, but their service to England and man is sterling and true. When the roll of honor is called of the sons of England, who should be on it? You or these? Sir Edward? From the depths I pray to you. Where did I pluck the sublimity of that? From the angels, from the air? From a dog. His owner refused to give him a bone. By Garantius's transcendental deathbed cry, I music from the wine of a dog for his bone. Sanctus horses. <laughs> On my 70th birthday, they gave me a dinner. Afterwards, at my house, they made music for me. I lived in that empty house for so long that they wanted to give me company, music. Be kind. Girl sang for me. Oh, so nervous, so nervous. She'd uh, practiced her song all day long for me. It was a song of mine, you see. I stood up, quaking. I, I, my head was, fist was raised. My brow was thunder. Stop, stop, stop! You've ruined my birthday! <laughs> you burst into tears and ran from the house and never sang a note again. Because you, you see, that song was written 
One day, when I was very old, the surgeons cut half my rotten stomach out. No anaesthetic. Shock was too much for the old heart. They um, anaesthetized the stomach only. There was a tiny curtain so that I couldn't see them cutting me. But it was a mirror in the ceiling. <laughs> They'd forgotten about that. I lay down and watched in the mirror above me everything the surgeon did. His knife butchering and bowling me alive. My vitals, my sustaining blood is all that Elgar. Mm. Very interesting. Have they uh, cracked the enigma yet? My secret, the, the, the famous tune that, that fits with my, my enigma theme. Uh, has anyone identified it yet? Oh, oh that's it, sir. Well, they have tried combining your theme with all sorts of tunes. Old Lang Syne in the minor, even God Save the King. None of the combinations is really convincing. The tune that fits is under all their noses, but they won't spot it, because, you see, they have no demon for counterpoint. Shall I tell you what it is? That, sir. That. <laughs> See it. Hear how my tune combines with that. Bum. Now, you're like one of the lunatics from the asylum where I taught. In your head, boy. Do you want all the world to know? See it in your head, nobly. I'll add my theme. Then listen, uh, in your head. How are they both combined? Da da dee da da dee da 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 between the hills, yourself and me. Till the grave, sir. Till the grave. Oh, yes. If uh, on the hills you ever hear the sound of an old man's whistling in the air, don't be afraid. It'll only be me. I come back to look at the world, you see, the lovely world. Silver River, Fern Valley, beautiful world. Look, look.
marks have been. You're in trouble with the school. You're in a, a bad reference. Maybe you'll get called up into the army. You'll end up peeling potatoes. You'll never get into university. You'll finish up on a conveyor belt. Don't you sneer, Stephen. A man cannot leave the belt for one moment without getting a stand-in to take his place. The belt moves on regardless of the needs of men. It gets at a man's heart. The whole rhythm of his life is chained to the machine. It's called productivity, Stephen. I've seen it. All day long, the ambulance is here and never still. You see, you are like the English language, Stephen. You have foreign parents, too. Even... Even Elgar had some Welsh blood. garden. Never get on top of this bloody garden. Bloody sow thistle. Bloody speedwell. Sop this bloody garden. And the people before us who let it run wild. Bloody sow thistle. Bloody speedwell. I'm sorry what I hear, Mrs. Arne. They swearing? Oh, no, no that you can't have any children. You live with that. Can't you adopt some? Oh, we've been accepted on the lists. They just aren't the babies. Can, can a homosexual have children? They make very good fathers, I'm told. I, I want to have children. Well, you know what to do. I only hope you and your future wife will make a better chemical compound than us two. Oh, we got one started. It fell out. My womb rejects. Chemical. I'm adopted. I'd never have guessed that, Stephen. How does it feel to be adopted? Sort of mixed. Glad and sad. Sad, I don't know where my real... where my real parents are. But gladder than sad. Like a molecule, in a way. Some of what goes to make me up, I know. But now there are unknown elements, possibilities. 
that if children are placed with us and they grow to feel like that, that will make us very happy. But I hope they give you lots of children, a whole tribe. Stephen. Because you're interesting people, your children would have interesting lives. Come on, Stephen. Don't stand around all day. Your arms are one length. Make yourself useful. I'm sorry, Mrs. Keynes. I am sorry. We pray for your reunion on another shore. Rector, we neither of us lived in open hut. We have our days. Now is this over. Father, when you heard the call of God, was it a real voice? Any voice you hear is real. But outside your head, was God's voice to you outside your head? No burning bush, if that's what you mean. Joan of Arc heard voices. Joan was a witch. The English only burnt her for one because she was a patriot of France. An official patriot and French saint now. What was she? 
There is some evidence that she might even have not been Christian, but that she practiced the, what is called the old religion, the primitive religion of the villages and fields. She worshipped the devil? Stephen, when a church, any church, goes to war against an older god, it has to call that older god the devil. In her last moment, we are told, Joan screamed through the flames to Jesus, you, Jesus, you. Whom did she see? The plaster Christ of the cathedrals, or her old elemental village god, the son of Adam, son of man, the torn, flayed hero bleeding on the tree, the old man-god, unchanging, ever-changing. Samson, Marduk, Jesus, Balder, Heracles, by whom this earth is haunted since the first beat of the heart of man. The bishop wouldn't like to hear you saying that. I have displeased other bishops in my time. The pagans practiced human sacrifice. Do we not? Their millions threw the fire to Moloch, living and dead. You know the old meaning of pagan as well as I do. Belonging to the village. The villagers sneered at as something petty. Petty it can be. Yet it works. The scale is human. People can relate there. Man may yet in the nick of time revolt and save himself. Revolt from the monolith, come back to the village. Jesus was a revolutionary in the most elemental sense. In him alone. In him alone, the legislator and the demon fuse. He has been taken over, just as Marx was taken over. Perverted by the Pauls, Augustines, Constantines, the institution mongers, the doctrine men. We crucify him over and over. Over and over in that church, I crucify him. Then why do you stay front? Because, because like all of us in this world, I am two men, a self and a non-self. Only by being non-selves can we now survive in our own mortal shrouds we weave around us. And what shall this survival profit us? In this day of the mask, this day of corporation man, what shall the self do then, poor thing, but curl away in from the poisoning wind and dream? Dream of some second coming man himself must bring about through some last disobedience and new resurrection. Yes, there is need of a book to argue this. Perhaps you might give the world just such a book. Stephen, where fathers fail, they look to their sons to achieve. I'm not your chemical son, Dad. I wouldn't inherit your understanding. No knowing, son, what you might not inherit. The world would have become this present bedlam, church or no. Yet I wonder. Romanticism of a sort, I know. And yet I wonder. Just as I wonder whom Joan of Arc in her last agony saw. I wonder about another, a man. A thousand years even earlier than she. King of Midland England. This last of his kind, last pagan king in England, fighting his last battle against 
the new machine, that battle in which he is to fall, King Pender. What mystery of this land went down with him forever? What wisdom? When Pender fell, what dark old son of light went out? Pen Finn. Pen Finn. King Pender's Finn. Did Pender die here? Who says that he is dead?
country. Many others proceed to the ancient universities, others into family businesses, others into the forces of the craft. All come to the first rungs of that ladder, destining us for positions of influence and decision-making in the land. Nor must we forget those uh, somewhat more angular brethren amongst us, whose eyes are turned to the sea upon less concrete things. So, what more fitting valedictory than to sing together one last time what has traditionally become our second school song and every Englishman's alternative national hymn. And did those feet in ancient time walk upon England's mountains green? And was the Holy Lamb of God on England's pleasant pastures seen? And did the countenance divine shine forth upon our clouded hills? Are you an English boy? Such a light in his eyes. True English boy. It is he. It is he. He has the light. We knew the child would come. He's been promised us for so long. But that we should find him. It's too lovely to be true. No, if we touch him, he'll vanish. It's written. The child is innocent. He does not know his inheritance. Nor does he know the courage he will need to exercise his right in this dark world. Not that they put us to the fire anymore. Oh, Stephen. Think of that torment. To be burned. Shackled to the mockery of a tree and burned. Living. What torment is that? Through the flames, we see our Lord. He reaches out his hand to bring us from the shadow of this world. When we were burned, we cried in joy. The Christians think we scream. We cried in joy. When we are burned, why we are burned to life. Your inheritance. Kings of the earth, you can come. They walk in their sleep. Yours is the right to inherit the power. To will their will. Power, Steve. To turn the rock of the world to wealth. Power. To fall and not to die. Like Joan the Maid.
You have to come with us. You are our child of light. You have to be born in us. Then you become pure light. No. No. Oh. I am nothing pure. Nothing pure. My race is mixed. My sex is mixed. I am woman and man. Light with darkness. Mixed. Mixed. I am nothing special. No, nothing pure. I am mud and flame. We can't have him darkness, but not. enemies of England, sick father and mother, who would have us children forever. King Pender. Stephen, our land must live. This land we love must live. Her deep dark flame must never die. Night is falling. Your land and mine goes down into a darkness now. And I and all the other guardians of her flame are driven from our home up out into the wolf jaw. But the flame still flickers in the fen. You are marked down to cherish that. Cherish the flame till we can safely wake again. The flame is in your hands. We trusted you our sacred demon of ungovernableness. Cherish the flame. We shall rest easy. Stephen, be secret. Child, be strange. Dark, true, impure, and dissonant. Cherish our flame, our dawn shall come.